Right, so 30p Lee. Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK, going even further right than the Tory parties. I can't imagine what appeals to him, quite honestly. They have, of course, welcomed him with open arms and given them their first MP. But politics in the UK haven't been dragged further and further to the right over 14 years of Tory rule, with Labour having been dragged further right with it under the Tory lightism of Keir Starmer and the desperation to paint Corbyn's time in charge as a mistake, with both main parties facing issues with voters, though especially the Tories, Anderson moving to the next populist rung of the establishment party political ladder is natural progression for him, not only in terms of political survival, but because of where he's come from to where he is now. He knows he's losing his seat under the Tories. He knows Reform UK are on the rise, and he has in part played a role in that, working for one of the two inverted commas, news channels that heavily push and promote reform and its sort of politics. Platforms the right have that the left don't. But he himself has not changed, even if the shade of blue on his rosette has. If Reform UK are the sort of party that welcomes somebody as serially rancid as Lee Anderson of all people, are you sure they're really an alternative? Right, so Lee Anderson, the Leanderthal, has defected from the Tories to Reform UK the private company that masquerades as a political party, basically owned by Talk TV's Richard Tice. So no surprise that Channel is re responsible for some serious promotion of said party and has become a source of appeal for the hard right of the Tory party that have attracted Anderson, on course under the Tories to lose his red wall seat with certainty, to join them instead, join Reform UK. But actually, if you look back at Anderson's career, his life and what's influenced him, he's living proof that the far right exists in every mainstream party, that they've been allowed to propagate and persist, the media have actually encouraged it because their offensiveness and mouthiness and pushing the boundaries of decency sells papers. We platform people like Lee Anderson who are like that. Anderson wasn't always like this, though. And not If you look, look it into his past a little bit, you think, well, how has he ended up the way he is? But what has been a mainstay in his pursuit of populism is definitely a, a running theme. The former coal miner, as he was back then, used to be a member of Arthur Scargill's NUM, the National Union of Mine Workers, taking it to the bog witch who was at the time the Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Anderson was a Labour member. He campaigned for Michael Foote, of all people. But the shift came later on. Something in his psyche, something influenced him, switched him from being left-wing when he was younger to not only being right-wing, but one of the worst right-wingers going in politics today. In 2015, he became an elected Labour official, becoming a councillor on Ashfield District Council. And by this point, he was more like the Anderson we know and loathe today. In 2018, he attacked the Gypsy, Roma and Traveller community, setting up boulders to illegally block them from setting up camp as they were legally allowed to do. He got a community protection warning from his own council over this, a slapdown for antisocial behaviour on a councillor, effectively, whilst in an elected post. And the following month, Following that, he defected to the Tories. During this time, he was also employed as a staffer for the then right-wing Labour MP Gloria De Piero, who eventually went on to become a presenter for GB News. Again, indicative of the level of right-wing sentiment that has always pervaded Labour too. The Labour Party arguably made Lee Anderson what he is today, because his shift from left to hard right happened whilst he was a member of that party. So he went to the Tories. Boris Johnson was the PM. It was all about Brexit, wasn't it, in 2019 or leading up to? And so was Anderson. And the populist that he is got himself elected to the Tories off the back of that in 2019. A red wall seat fell and Anderson had changed the party at the right time to suit himself. And what we're seeing now is that being repeated. As the Tories face utter annihilation at the next general election, Anderson predicted to lose his seat. But having now switched to Reform UK, who are being hailed as something different, who have two news channels promoting them heavily, one of which Reform UK's own leader and deputy leaders both work for, and now they have an MP who also works for one of those stations, Anderson, who makes £100,000 a year on GB News, back on the same station as his old boss, Gloria De Piero. So this is a guy who was turned hard right during his time as a Labour member and councillor defected to the Tories to suit his own political ambitions, which succeeded, and now to what should be nobody's surprise whatsoever, he's doing it again now, jumping to Reform UK in a bid to retain his seat and distance himself from the Tory implosion going on and continuing to attack Rishi Sunak for his failures. 
In fact, Anderson once called Reform UK leader Nigel Tice a pound shop Nigel Farage, yet now has joined his party. Read ought to expose the self-serving move that this is for all to see. People will be fooled into thinking this is a guy with principles over this and he's walked with them. You might snigger at that comment, but I'd remind you there are people who vote Tory religiously in this country, easily fooled as they are. And goodness knows those with a vested interest in carrying that on will push that narrative. But actually what it really should be showing people is this is the direction establishment interests, UK politics, are drifting in now and have been for years, frankly. And the appeal to disaffected Tories of Reform UK is there. We know Tories are choosing to sit on their hands. We've seen that in all the by-elections they've lost over the last several months. Disgusted by the Tories over all manner of things now. The uselessness over the economy. Immigration is always used as a stick to, to get them out and get the vote out. Appalling stance on Israel and Gaza, which transcends traditional party divides and has been a problem for Labour as well. Anyone actually thinking Reform UK is anything different, though, is in for a shock. It really ought to be called the Fool Me Once, Shame On Me party, because this is just... The Brexit party rebranded, vehicle of Nigel Farage given a new name and a bit of pot of spit polish, and a party that has been desperate to woo MPs from the Tory party over to themselves, apparently last year offering bribes of up to £400,000 in the form of a compensation payment if MPs defected to them and they subsequently lost their seats, effectively paying them roughly an MP's salary for five years that they'd be out of power until they could try again. Has that offer been made to Anderson here? This should have seen reform fall foul of the Bribery Act, but of course such things have never been proven. Now I thought at the time that it would be an interesting use of donors' money, but that it requires some donors, and these largely tailed off when the Brexit party became Reform UK in January 2021. Farage went, and then Richard Tice took over, and a few months later all of a sudden the donors had all but disappeared, and the entire party was being supported by a private company called Britain Means Business Limited which was previously known as Leave Means Leave. Yes, the very wealthy current Reform UK party leader Richard Tice was pretty much self-financing the party for about a year up until 2022. This is why I refer to Reform UK as a private company more than a political party, because for a whole year it basically was being run by one man. Finance, certainly. They had no reportable donations for over a year, according to the Electoral Commission, which makes me wonder, was the party still considered a going concern? But donors did return last year, including a company called First Corporate Consultants Limited, a vehicle which has on its board climate change denier Terence Mordaunt, and another donor who is usually funding the Tories is the hedge fund owner Crispin O'Day. But with Anderson now on board, could more follow? Donors and MPs, that is. Well, if you listen to Tory critics of Rishi Sunak, who have been calling for him to go, well, of course there are, because it gives them another excuse to say Sunak has to go even though there's literally no talent in the party right now to actually take over from him. Nobody really seems to strike me as voluntarily standing up and taking over to let Sunak off the hook from steering the party into a massive, record-breaking electoral defeat that could destroy the party entirely. Oh, that may salivate him stuff, isn't it? Not unless the scale of that defeat is so large that they fear doing nothing. But I don't see a long list of candidates queuing up to take over ahead of the election still. There have been so many occasions where Sunak could have dealt with Anderson previously, but instead he courted that awfulness instead, made him deputy party chairman. So as much as people who back Sunak will say he did the right thing in suspending Anderson for the Islamophobic attack he made on Sadiq Khan and claiming London is controlled by those controlling Khan, Islamists, it was a bed Sunak made for himself and has now invited more calls for him to step down, which he won't do. There is talk from those wanting Sunak gone at any rate that there are another nine possible MP defectors to Reform UK waiting in the wings. But if true, all will be from a similar hard right position as Lee Anderson, because that is where that party is. What Anderson has done is legitimise Reform UK as the next iteration of mainstream political positioning as political discourse in this country keeps getting dragged ever further to the right, even further towards authoritarianism and fascism, frankly. Lee Anderson doesn't belong within a million miles of any position of responsibility or power with views as offensive as his are. But where is the challenge to it? Labour under Starmer just goes further right too, keeps supporting the Tories and everything. Those of us on the left need to stop letting our votes be allowed to be dragged further right by saying we have to vote for one or the other and say, no, I'm not going to back that system anymore. I'm not backing either of them. I'm not supporting this lurch to the right. 
and look beyond these establishment mainstream parties, because if not, this country is set to keep getting so much worse. And more and more Lee Andersons will start appearing in Parliament, and we've won too many of those already. People refer to Anderson as 30p Lee for his offensive views on poverty. There are also his offensive views on asylum, earning him the moniker of also being a 30p Enoch Powell. You wouldn't know the guy at one point worked for Citizens Advice, actually, would you? But he did. Here's a video recommendation reminding you again of what a downright, chronically awful individual this guy is, and therefore what an awful choice come the general election Reform UK would be. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.